So wow, this is like a jazz wonderland. Wow, so shall we go inside? So Thelonious Monk, another guy, you know, he never sounded like anybody but himself. And I think that is such a feat because you'd think it'd be easy to be yourself, but I, it's, I found the case to be actually the opposite. You know, you have so many voices in your head. Most of them are well-meaning who hear your teachers what you hear but I admire these artists who really they came up with their own sound you know and uh, trying to unpack what that is it's I, I liken it to visual artists who you say wow that's that's how they saw the world you know so this is how he hears the world so McCoy Tyner okay, revelation so I was doing my undergrad in classical piano at UT Austin and a friend of mine said one night, let's go hear Harry Connick Jr. And I didn't know who he was because I was your typical classical nerd who just practiced all the time. I didn't go to one football game either. She said, don't worry, he's really cute. You'll like him. And I said, okay. And so yes, he was very cute. And he had his big band and he was singing. And But in the middle of the concert, he sat down and played some solo piano in the, I didn't know them, but in the style of like Professor Long hair stride, New Orleans thing. And I remember feeling like I'd been hit by lightning, like, you're allowed to play the piano like that? And how come no one told me this? And that just started me on my journey. And I, it wasn't like I was going to say, I'll oh, forget classical. I just knew I wanted to make jazz a part of my life. But the more I learned about it, the more I just came to respect and love it. It's just this profound art form. And didn't want to just kind of fake it just because I had the chops, you know? Time. <gasps> Now, what does this mean, test pressing? Is it the record? The test pressing? Is it the record? When, just before the record goes into production, company will, it will have these, what they call test pressings made, which are usually sent to the artist, uh, promoter, A&R people, just to see that the sound quality is correct. So this is the actual session? Because you know the remastered CD version of this, there are glitches in the song. Like you'll skip like half a second. I know that because I transcribed almost every solo <laughs> off of the before. CD version of that? Yeah, the remastered. I don't know when they because you can't find anything but the remastered around. And I, I had the one before that. I, in fact, it's on cassette tape. Yeah, so I'm trying to find the original. So this is. That's that's. Original, original. That's pre-original. Okay, well, I do want this because... Excuse me. Well, oh. sorry, it doesn't have a pretty cover. But this is one of the great albums. It's actually called The Real McCoy. And uh, this has had a huge influence and continues, have, continues to have a huge influence on my... the shaping of my playing and the concepts that I'm working on. Blow my... What is that? You have, what my friends say? You have champagne tastes on a... <laughs> A water budget. <laughs> really excited of what I found. I hope you have a turntable. Yes. It maximizes the listening pleasure. <laughs> you know, this is this is really beautiful and special. And, uh,